I'm going to be talking to you about the Devil's Messiah. The Devil's Messiah. Uh, we're going to catch up in our current events and also prophecy on what's going on. Uh, I do this uh, once a month. That way we can be aware about what's going on in our world and then not be ignorant of Satan's devices. <clears throat> All right. We're going to look at 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. Now, for some of you who are looking at this chart, you're going to follow along the teaching and see how it comes down to this. There are two things in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 that it talks about that I want you to look at, and that's the falling away and the man of sin being revealed at verse 3. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come. Okay, that day shall not come. Uh, in easier language, it's referring to the end times, or that's what I believe. <clears throat> the end times, it's not going to happen except there come a falling away first, <clears throat> and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. So once we have these two specific events, then we can get the entire end times or the entire apocalypse uh, all set and done. So these are two signs that you're going to notice at this board. So notice right here the falling away, falling away with everything you're going to see and then the revealing. I want you to pay attention to that and then I want you to follow along with me as I teach. Okay, hopefully I didn't ruin it by just moving it like that. So, okay, it looks okay, looks okay. So keep in mind on the falling away and the revealing. I might show you something that basically the verses that you're reading will be more literal than you think. The verse that we just read can be even more literal than you think as I go through the current events and everything of what's going on. <clears throat> I don't know if some of you have heard about the new drug that's going out that's been warned. It's very dangerous. Even uh, the Democrats have to talk about it. The title of the news from Fox News is Democrat Schumer warns New York City skin rotting zombie drug traffic from Mexico could make fentanyl seem tame. Whoa. Now, if you already know about fentanyl, that's worse than heroin. But now we got something that's even worse than fentanyl. That's really scary. And this is a skin-rotting zombie drug. Now, you're talking about stuff that you heard about from apocalypse movies or zombie movies, but this is a real thing. Senator Chuck Schumer calls on DEA to help stop scourge of Chinese source, I think you pronounce it xylazine, I'm not sure, mixtures peddled by evil drug dealers. The article is written by Danielle Wallace from Fox News. Now... There are some who argue that because this is reaching Democrat cities, you can see that the Democrat government, they're not really uh, lowering crime and they're not really doing a good job, which is not a surprise. We've known that for years now. All right. Put the Democrats into office and the society is not getting better. Things just get worse. Crime gets worse. Drug uh, gets worse, etc. So we see right here the failure of the Democrats to be able to bring in a peaceful and prosperous society. Things just get worse. As a matter of fact, the government can be so sickening that concerning about the January 6th riot or peaceful protest or whatever you want to call it, okay, I don't care, but the January 6th event some of you have heard that Tucker Carlson was able to get the entire or a huge amount of footage of what happened. And he was exposing and revealing, and if you actually watch it, then it turned out what a lot of the conservatives suspected was true. That basically it wasn't something violent, it wasn't something really tragic. Albeit there, we can admit there was some of that, okay? But you know news media, all right? They're going to concentrate on that 1% thing, you know, that they don't like and ignore the 99% of the surrounding, okay? If you look at that footage, uh, for example, the Q 
a non-shaman, we've heard about that guy, that it wasn't something that he did like a terrorist act or he did something that was very dangerous or violent. It showed the footage of how even the officers were guiding him along like it was a tour guide to the museum. Yeah. And he was even peacefully praying over for them, you know, because the weirdo that he is, he's a shaman, remember, okay? Yeah. He's a shaman. And then all the other people, they're just walking along. But we saw, we don't need that big footage, to be honest. We already saw plenty of footage on that one. All right? It's all over online. We've seen it. But the media completely ignores that. And they say that, oh, it was such a horrible event and et cetera. So basically, if you're elites and whatever that you perceive to be dangerous, then everybody should believe you. But if the public has some kind of big danger going on in their streets during BLM times, and elites say, oh no, it's not that much of a danger, and they're hypocritical when these guys end up in their own home yards, and they say, okay, this is dangerous. See what's going on right here? This is all elitist control. That makes me stinking angry. All right, these elites, they act like, oh, so dangerous. You weren't there. You didn't know. Oh, you didn't know. Uh, be like us normal citizens in our homes, in the city areas, in the not so good neighborhoods. All right. And let's see you guys whining what we've been complaining about for a long time. Elites, man. They want us to feel sorry for them yeah. rather than uh, them feeling sorry for us. Wicked, demon-possessed people, man. It seems like I always say that line every time I do current events. Okay. Anyway, title of the article is, Tucker Carlson releases exclusive January 6 footage. Says politicians, media lied about Sicknick QAnon Shaman. All right. And James O'Keefe is also uh, taking stuff out. He suggested, according to the Epoch Times, title of the article, James O'Keefe, suggests he has insiders on Trump grand jury. So you're smelling corruption. We see the failure of the Democrats, and at the same time, we see their corruption, which is not a surprise. But I want you to see this line. It's going to lean up, uh, lead up to something. It's going to lead up to something. Here's another thing to be uh, suspicious about of their corruption. Title of the, another title from the Epoch Times, Judge denies request from January 6th defendants to cross-examine FBI. Because remember, a lot of people were suspicious about some certain individuals who acted, uh, who were from the FBI, but they acted within the protest and the demonstra demonstrations of January 6th. So they were suspicious and wondering if they were the ones who incited some things that caused a riot. But then to cross-examine FBI, judge denies a request for that. As a matter of fact, if you see, if I recall, I think it was Ted Cruz, video is still up there, where he was asking a certain person from the intelligence committee about his name, and he mentioned a specific name, so-and-so. Everybody's been suspicious of this guy for causing disruptions and to cause, to stir up the riots in January 6th is this person from the intelligence committee and then this stinking agent says, I cannot confirm or deny. Of course. So this just makes things really suspicious. Yeah. Just makes things more suspicious. So then the Democrats, they know that they're getting into hot water. So they have to find any piece of dirt to make sure that the Republicans turn on each other. So this is important to see from this other line, okay? Because it's going to lead to something, these two things that I want you to notice. So here's one example is obviously it has to do with the Trump drama. Now you've noticed that the liberal news media, they always do that. They always dramatize the Trump issue, hoping that the Republicans will turn against each other and that uh, the world can be able to hate the Republican Party and join more so and vote more so to the Democrat side. So here's one example from NBC News. Because Tucker Carlson, Carlson was exposing stuff from January 6th, obviously they have to aim toward this guy. The title of the article from NBC News is, I hate him passionately. 
Tar Tucker Carlson was fed up with Trump after the 2020 election. Okay, what's going on here? Supposedly, remember Dominion, uh, the world's most trustworthy uh, source, all right? <laughs> they went to court against Fox News because Fox News was trying to, and they were claiming that Dominion was doing rigged elections. Because of that uh, claim from Fox News, Dominion, they pulled them up to court, and then there were some emails and documents that was able to be accessed. Grabbing the emails and the documents, the liberal news media finally was able to expose the real thing, what's going on behind Fox News, that the Fox News reporters, they all hate Trump. They actually don't like him. So they were hoping to do that so that the Republican side could turn against each other and weaken. However, the problem with that is that they dug their own grave. What they did was, for example, Deadline News, and to be honest, it's kind of hard to access this now because it was there before, and then when I accessed it, again, accessed it again, it wasn't there before. I pulled up this document in other liberal news sources. It was there before, but they took it down. The reason why was this. The news, uh, the liberal news, they were trying to show like emails or the documents, some of the documents that they had, trying to expose that Fox News, that they had their corruptions and holes. But they don't realize they dug themselves a hole in return because they were showing some court documents from uh, where, I think, uh, what was his name, that guy uh, that they were pointing out, Eric Schumer, right, or Eric Cooper, the one from Dominion that they were really pouncing on. So that guy, they were pulling up his quotes where he was admitting and confessing, for example, our products, uh, blank, that's what he says in a bleep word. So he's talking about his own machines, his own products in Domi Dominion, that they're very bad. Okay, I just can't say the word, all right? Here's another one from Eric Coomer uh, for Dominion's Director of Product Strat Strategy and Security. He acknowledged in private that our, quote, our bleep is just riddled with bugs. And these are from his emails. Another one is that he lamented that, quote, almost all, end of quote, of Dominion's technological failings were, quote, due to our complete beeped up installation. He identified, quote, a critical bug leading to incorrect results, end of quote. He also said, quote, it does not get much worse than that. <laughs> Coomer also lamented, quote, we don't address our weaknesses effectively, end of quote. So these were documents pulled up. This is on page 15 from, let me give that source. Defendant Fox News Network LLC's brief in support of its rule 56 motion for summary judgment. And then I gave you the page number. So the, new, the liberal news sources, you know, Good for them, you know. They posted those documents, and then guess what the right-wingers were doing? They pulled that up and were pointing out, oh, look at right here. So our suspicions were right all along, and then they have to bleep that. They have to make sure that it's hard to find. And then when the next time I looked at those news sources who tried to point out what the emails and documents really said, they don't really show them. They're the ones quoting it in their own articles. They don't give you the attachment files like they did before. But uh, anyway, I could be wrong. Maybe they'll magically put it back up again because people like me are criticizing them for hiding it. But it's been sure hard for me to find it after that. I was like, what happened? And this uh, file I was able to get from Deadline.com. So Deadline News, their source. But it didn't work the next time when I looked it up. So thankfully, I was able to, because I'm good at researching, I, I had that exact link. And then because I had the exact link, I was able to pull it up. Corruption, corruption. It just stinks to high heaven. It just makes it suspicious. Let's see right here. From uh, Matt Hancock. For some of you who don't know, he was the 
Uh, Matt Hancock, he was the former health secretary. And from BBC News, I believe it's in England, the article is titled, Matt Hancock, leaked messages suggest plan to frighten public. Mm -hmm. So they found corruption again. They mention right here that Matt Hancock suggested to an aide that they frighten the pants off everyone about, you know, that, that disease that we had the past two years. Fauci's fungus. Fauci's fungus, thank you. Yes, that's the name for it. I just forgot, yeah. To frighten the pants off everyone about Fauci's fungus, messages published by the Sunday Telegraph show. And they mentioned uh, how much that he over-dramatized it. Why? To make the public fearful so that they can be able to continue on with their procedures and be able to control the crowd. How about that? It just makes it more, dis uh, you lose more trust. It causes more mistrust with our system. The system is getting broken from this party. There's no doubt about it. And another article, this is from NBC News, title, Lori Lightfoot becomes the first Chicago, Chicago mayor in 40 years to lose re-election. <laughs> Good riddance. You remember her? You know how, how horrible and awful she was, especially during this time, you know, when it was going on? Serves her right. Why was she the first in 40-something long years to lose re-election? I'll tell you why. Because people know that this is, they failed them. Yeah. And that they're stinking corrupt. And uh, no surprise about the old geezer. Title of the article from ABC News. What they found out was something was removed during Biden's physical was cancerous, they found out. White House doctor says. That was the title of the article from ABC News from Alexandra Hutzler. So they're like, man, old Joe, we were already worried about, you know, if he's going to die any moment. Then they removed something uh, from during his own physical. He just had a physical and they removed something that was cancerous. So look at this. It's falling apart. Who's going to lead them? Who's going to save them? Especially, you know who's running in the presidential race? It's coming up, right? Now, it's already hitting April, and we're not seeing a lot, a lot of candidates uh, who declared they're running already. So look at the weakness of what's growing inside this party. Basically, the old geezer, if you can believe it, it's hard to believe, but the old geezer is the guy who's probably the strongest in the race so far, if you can believe in that. Now, no one is challenging, uh, not a lot of people are challenging him, except people like this woman, weirdo. Title of the article from New York Post. Marianne Williamson <laughs> confirms she will enter 2024 presidential race as Dem challenger to Biden. Well, what's wrong with that, Pastor? Because she's a self-help guru. So you got a self-help guru <laughs> who's going to run for Democrat president. You see how much we're falling apart? My goodness, I can run for president. <laughs> oh, I can run for president. Now, who's running, in, uh, who's running for president in 2024? If you look up that article, it's going to show you her and old Joe. So that, uh, look at this. No good candidate to save us. There's probably uh, one or two that I missed out, but I, to my knowledge, it's only those two. That's it. So there's no good candidate there for the Democrat Party. What about the Republican side? Well, the Trump drama is what's trying to break it apart, okay? But especially what I mean by Trump drama is not just the liberals, but even Trump himself. Because he, uh, he was talking about in one title here from Time Magazine, Trump says he expects to be arrested Tuesday. Well, uh, you know what happened after that. If you know about Trump, he has a tendency where he's able to catch attention in news because of his dramatics. Whether you believe it or not, that is his style. And that's plainly seen from how he's trying to get, uh, trying to get Rick DeSantis to fight him. He, as you might recall from my other videos covering this, 
He was, he was criticizing Rick DeSantis. He's trying to get him to fight him. Rick DeSantis, he's trying to butt out of it. But then even the advisors are pressuring him to get involved. The advisors and other people in the parties are pressuring him to get involved. So when you get uh, two people you like, if you're a Republican, Trump and DeSantis, and they start hashing it out, that's a broken divide as well. It's going to erupt to a Republican civil war, so to speak. Here's the title of the article from New York Times. DeSantis breaking silence on Trump criticizes Manhattan prosecutor. So when you read this article, uh, DeSantis, he's been, it will mention how he's been trying to avoid Donald Trump's attacks and criticisms against him. But DeSantis also said right here that the Manhattan District Attorney who tried to uh, put Trump into prison, which is why Trump said, I'm going to be arrested Tuesday, because there's a district attorney in Manhattan, unbiased person that he is, no agenda whatsoever, who wants to put Trump into prison, which is no surprise in New York in the Democrat areas. The lawyers are not done. District attorneys are not done. They want to put uh, Trump into prison. That's why Trump gave that dramatic, he gave that dramatic, uh, uh, he gave that dramatic quote that he's going to be uh, arrested at Tuesday. And then Rick DeSantis mentioned this about the Manhattan District Attorney, which is not a surprise, quote, but I do know this, the Manhattan District Attorney is a Soros-funded prosecutor. Don't forget those elites, George Soros, not a surprise right there. But uh, you get articles coming out uh, from the New York Times again and other liberal news sources who are trying to dismiss that. And they're saying, no, 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 that's very misleading. George Soros did not pay the Manhattan District Attorney to put Trump into prison. That's besides the point. The point is, is that George Soros gave a huge amount of funds, and we know who. He gave them to that Manhattan District Attorney and other liberal prosecutors and politicians. Why? To fulfill, his dem uh, to fulfill liberal and democratic agendas. It doesn't change that fact. So why would they say, oh, that's uh, fake news, and then, oh, that's very misleading. No, it's not. They are tied, and they do admit that. The New York Times title of their article is fact-checking, obviously, explaining the ties between Alvin Bragg and George Soros. But they do admit, New York Times admits, that is misleading, though the men do have a financial connection. <laughs> Whatever. When I read it, I wasn't satisfied. It doesn't change the fact that uh, these liberal politicians are able to carry out their agenda because of bigwigs like him who fund them. It doesn't change that fact. What's, what are they talking about? News sources, you notice, are getting more and more misleading with their fact-checking. Okay, now, understanding all of this, here are the candidates who have entered the presidential race. The Republican race, we can see that big divide, and we don't know what's going to happen. Uh, hopefully that won't be the case where there's something like, quote-unquote, a civil war breaking out or something between them. But this is causing also for the Republican side to not have a good candidate to save us. From the New York Time, uh, Times article, Who's running for president in 2024? Not really that good when you look at it. The old geezer, and then uh, don't forget the guru, okay? The self-help guru for the Democrat side. And for the Republican side is obviously Trump. But then it's uh, two people that you really don't think, uh, you, you would hardly know from Adam, Haley and... I think I'm mispronouncing his last name, uh, Ramaswamy. I, I don't know if I'm pronouncing his last name right. But what about, I thought Pence, I thought DeSantis and those guys would be running. But they didn't, uh, they didn't enter the race yet, which is kind of uh, late. And the article admits that, that this is kind of getting slow here, which makes you wonder. So the ones who are expected to run, what they're hoping, is DeSantis, Pence, Pompeo, and Scott. But these are the 
people who have not entered the race yet. The ones who entered the race are two people you don't know from Adam and two, and two elderly people and then a self-help guru. Now, this, both sides are leading no good candidate to save us. And the article admits something right here. It admits right here, four years after a historically large number of candidates ran for president, the field for the 2024 campaign is starting out small and looks like it will be headlined by the same two aging men who ran in the general election last time. Now think about this, aging men. You're reaching at a point where basically it's not really good candidates because they're really too old. Remember last time, uh, the liberals loved Obama. Fresh, strong. That would be a better candidate than two elderly people. Why is it that fresh, young, strong candidates are not coming out? You ever wonder that? Except weirdos and strange people and people you don't know from Adam. Something's leading up right here. So you see the blue and the red right here. If there's no good candidate, it's going to lead them to something. It's going to force them to something. But before we hit right there, okay, from the blue and the red, when they're forced to this position, and we'll see what will happen at 2024. This could be faster than we think. If they're trapped into this where there's two aging men and then they're, they're like, well, we need someone that can save us in this one. Someone who will be a good leader. Well, what's going on at the same time with other events? They're all coinciding right here. Let's go to war. And it's breaking out in the news. It's getting scarier and scarier. And you and I know about that. For example, our relationship with China is going very well so far, as you might know. <laughs> you heard about TikTok, right? The company that uh, a lot of people are concerned about uh, Chinese propaganda, Chinese communism taking control of it. So even liberal, not just conservative, but liberal news sources are exposing and getting concerned about TikTok. Title of the article from NBC News is TikTok CEO doesn't seem to sway Congress after facing hours of hostile questioning. So how about that? So he's been questioned for a long time and watch him, okay? There's something similar with sly people like him and Fauci when they go in front of Congress. Yeah. You, may, you wonder where, who they got their training from or how to talk like that from. But when you watch him, oh my goodness, it's the same thing like Fauci. You know, you come up with these alternative explanations and sneaky things. Zuckerberg and those guys, they were just sweating and they looked like they were gonna wet their pants. <laughs> you know, it was like, and he was all red faced. But this guy, the TikTok CEO and Fauci, it's like they've been trained. Yeah. Like they knew how to answer fresh and look very, very innocent. Mm -hmm. But there was one, which is really good, from Dan Crenshaw. <laughs> and obviously, if you know him, he's like, oh, yeah, he's going to really try to hammer him on this one. From Forbes Breaking News, title of the video is, Would you agree that TikTok is controlled by the CCP? That's Dan Crenshaw doesn't let up on TikTok CEO. And if you watch that video, he does a very good job. He tries, to, uh, he tries to get him to confess it. And he, you can see this TikTok CEO, how he tries to weasel around it. And then he says, I'm not Chinese, I'm Singaporean, you know, something like that. You know, it just does Singapore a disservice. It just makes them all mad, you know. Just makes, they, they just want to kick him out and wish he's Chinese then or something like that. I don't know. But the way that he's talking is that you, uh, he's doing his trick talk. And then, but Dan Cranshaw didn't let him up and was trapping him, was trapping him uh, all the time and then questioning him and he just slammed him real good. So that's why, I I, that's why I mentioned that video. That way you can watch it and see how he was able to catch him no matter how sly he was. Dan Crenshaw, when he heard his answer, he's like, but, but it still doesn't change the fact. And then Crenshaw just re repeats his question and just sticks right there. But anyway, people, 
are getting suspicious of China more and more. Even the Democrat side, which before, uh, under Trump's presidency, you didn't get that. And they accused Trump and right-wingers for racism. But now, all of a sudden, they're joining the anti-China, quote-unquote, bandwagon. Because, look what they found with um, <clears throat> Fauci's fungus. You know what I mean, right? All right, so I'm going to say that. Title of the article from CBS News. FBI chief says agency feels Fauci's fungus likely started with Chinese lab leak. Did you hear that? FBI chief from CBS News. I'm quoting from liberal sources. Left-wing liberal news source, another one admitted by the Washington Post. FBI director says Fauci's fungus most likely originated from lab incident. What have we been saying all this time? And remember, this is all a lie. That's all fake news. I'm sure you caught that, right? So it's all fake news. Until you get Biden from KHN Morning Briefing, Tuesday, March 21st, 2023, title, Biden signs, Fauci's fungus, <clears throat> origin bill to declassify intel on Wuhan lab. Oh, 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 what you know, what you know. Our relationships with China now is getting really, really tense. So tense that you get articles like this, which is very concerning. America and China are preparing for a war over Taiwan from The Economist. That's the title of the article. Another one, <clears throat> title of the article, expert Chinese lasers in Hawaii could signal attack. And that's the title of the article from Newsmax. Now, the stuff that we heard about the tensions with China and America, now what we're seeing on the news sounds worse. And sounds like we're like at the brink, like you just take one nasty incident and we can easily go to war anytime. But this is getting really hot now. It's getting to the point of being scary. This is horrible. Title of the article from NBC News. China forcefully harvests organs from detainees, tribunal concludes. Whoa. For some of you who didn't know that, here's some of them what they said right here. <clears throat> the organs of members of marginalized groups detained in Chinese prison camps are being forcefully harvested, sometimes when patients are still alive. Some of the more than 1.5 million detainees in Chinese prison camps are being killed for their organs to serve a booming transplant trade that is worth some $1 billion a year, concluded the China Tribunal, an independent body tasked with invest investigating organ harvesting from prisoners of conscience in the authoritarian state. Where were they all this time? Where were they? Why didn't they talk about that kind of stuff? Where were the liberals all that time? Now they caught up. We were right all along. We've been talking about that, but oh no, racism, right? <sighs> then don't forget Russia, okay? Don't forget Russia. Our relationship is just going wonderful with them too, remember? <laughs> Title of the article from AP News, and I will move aside a little bit over here. Drones fly deep inside Russia. Putin orders border tighten. Okay. <laughs> this is getting bad now. Here's another one. So bad that the title of the article from, I believe it's called CEPA, C-E-P-A. Gone mushrooming. Russian nukes in Belarus. Okay, that's scary. Vladimir Putin announced plans to deploy tactical nuclear weapons in their country. And that is causing tensions with uh, Europe and America when they say, why are those news going over there? Why are you letting that happen? Because it's the uh, closest place where you can just shoot it across and, oh man, God forbid, it might hit that part in Canada or some part of North America. The Kremlin is trying to scare the West by breaking nuclear proliferation rules. This is really bad, people. 
So Russia with their nukes, China like on the brink of war, unless something happens, but it'll get worse if you get both of them together. And you might recall that I've constantly talked about that, even in the Revelation commentary two years ago, that how I see more and more is China, uh, communist nations and Muslim nations, uh, Russia, China, and other countries, that they seem to be allied together where they might have a big world war against United Nations. So that, that theory of mine could turn out to be very much true. And the title of the telegraph is this. Xi Jinping tells Putin, change not seen in 100 years is coming as they shake hands together. What change is he talking about? In the past 100 years, they never saw that change. What's that supposed to mean? That's scary, isn't it? I thought the past 100 years we were able to have some kind of peaceful relationship. But now China and Russia are shaking hands and saying, now we're going to make a change that people haven't seen for 100 years. And it's coming. Looks like they're teaming up. This brings a question about North Korea then. This brings a question about North Korea. And believe it or not, the title of the article right here from Reuters is North Korea claims almost 800,000 have signed up to fight against U.S. And then, don't forget uh, what your pastor mentioned about Muslim nations, right? So, Israel and Iran tensions are coming out. So here's Israel, but it's going as if they might have a warfare or conflict with each other. Title of the article from Fox News, <clears throat> Netanyahu readies strike on Iran nuclear facilities after secret meetings report. Israel will prepare for possible action against Iran's nuclear facilities after a series of secret meetings between the prime minister and leaders from the defense and intelligence ministries, according to a leaked report. Israel will not allow Iran to become nuclear. As we are witnessing the continued unhindered progress of the Iranian military nuclear program with weapons grade enrichment, Israel is readying its credible military option. Okay, this is really, really getting there. I mean, like chaos. Can you picture nukes going off all over around the world? Something that we haven't seen for a long time and you're wondering, oh my, it's like any moment unless someone, see that? Someone can save us. Some leader can finally have a successful foreign policy who can finally calm things down. Because we got two aging men and I don't know if they're capable for doing the job. Some people might think or the public might think. All right. But adding that to another event is we heard about Silicon Valley Bank. All right. I hope you in invested good money over there and deposited over there because we trust our liberal banks and our woke banks so much over there. Thank God our church never got involved in that one, all right? <laughs> but we heard about the Silicon Valley Bank where it crashed and that everybody's freaking out. And everybody's like, oh, we're gonna lose money. What's gonna happen? And then people were going to their own banks and then prepping things where they might lose money. But this is bad from USA Today. Title of their article is Close to 190 banks could face Silicon Valley Bank's fate, according to a new study. Let me read that again. Close to 190 banks could face Silicon Valley Bank's fate, according to a new study. And then if you don't believe the news source, you can look up their study article. And when you look at their study, this actual study article, it's pretty scary. Here's a title from the Economist News. America's banks are missing hundreds of billions of dollars. <laughs> from the Economist. 
the bank is crashing everything apart like a domino effect. Why, why is this happening to all of us? Why is this happening to all of us? Well, you'll see right here, something goes along with this line. Something goes along with this line. If you know something about uh, a lot of the liberal companies and banks nowadays, they're all addressing liberal concerns and getting involved with liberal concerns and politics and then with the woke agenda getting heavily involved in that and by their fruits ye shall know them. The title of the article from the Heartland Institute is Silicon Valley Bank was a woke bank and wokeness is what brought it down. So this person argues and he gives some examples and explanations and some pretty good arguments on why uh, Silicon Valley Bank, due to its woke ideologies, that because they were heavily concentrating on that, putting money, lots of money into that to support that agenda, which is the reason why it crashed, because they weren't really concentrating on their jobs and what they're supposed to do to protect their customers' money and then work on those things. If you look up all over from mainstream news, they'll say, no, it's not because of the woke agenda. It's because of leadership issues, and that was addressed. But whether it was leadership issues, the problem is, is that they won't address the woke concerns. So it's a little bit mingling. And how I see it is this. How I see it is, it's all of them. All of that was a problem. Leadership issues, planning issues, management issues, and woke issues. That's how I see it. Simple as that. For them to deny wokeness agenda is really, really funny when, by common sense, everybody knows that when you go around places nowadays, you're afraid to speak out against liberal ideology. Because, you know, people are brainwashed and following the woke agenda. Here's one example, okay, how woke agenda just crashes everything. I wonder if that's really the case. I wonder if that's really a case. That because they're concentrating on woke concepts that they're not really concentrating on their jobs and the banks are falling apart. Well, here's another one. Credit, I think it's pronounced Suisse, collapse threatens Switzerland, Switzerland's wealth management crown. Oh, that's very scary. That's the title of Reuters article. You wonder why? Could it be something woke? Well, wouldn't you know? Uh, this is from the person who hit top 100 female executives in the 2018 Heroes Champions of Hashtag Women in Business list. And who is it? It's supposed to be by the name of a Pips Bunce. A Pips Bunce who's uh, quoting from Head Global Markets Core Engineering Integration Components. Wh what is Pips Bunce? Sometimes the person feels that she is a woman and other times he is a man, but maybe they is better. Or whatever article that, or title that they would refer to would feel more comfortable for them. <laughs> and you wonder why you get people like that in charge and running everything? And you wonder why everything is falling apart? <laughs> uh, here's the title of the article from The Hill. Hershey responds to backlash. Why? Over Women's Day campaign. What's wrong with that one? Why is there a backlash concerning their Women's Day campaign? Because the campaign that came out at Women's Day featured a trans activist on Women's Day. On Women's Day. <laughs> I, I always like Ghirardelli better than Hershey anyway. All right. You heard about this one that happened? With this one going all over, I wonder how the news will cover up whenever this group of people does some kind of heinous act. I wonder how they're going to really mention it or cover it up. What do you mean, Pastor? This happened recently. I'm pretty sure some of you have already heard about this, about gun shootings again, and then it was in the Nashville school and there was a person who came in and then shot three kids, murdered them. But guess who that person was? 
Title of the article from Sky News, Nashville School Shooting, Transgender Killer Who Murdered Three Kids Was Ex-Student Who Made Manifesto and Maps of Building. A 28-year-old who identified as transgender has shot dead three children aged nine and three adults at a private Christian school in Nashville, Tennessee. Okay. I'm really interested to see how the news will cover that. How they will word that. I know what they will do. Oh, by the way, this was in a Christian school. This was in a Christian school. Take it the other way around where the Christian is a killer and that killer that identifies as beep, 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 beep was the school. I wonder how the news will cover that one. Yeah. Now the shoe fits. Let's see. It's your turn to hit the ball now. The ball's in your court, liberal you. Let's see how you handle it now. Well, the Christians, they're just... Uh, doing a wonderful job when this agenda is growing because title of the article from the Christian Post, Andy Stanley, famous pastor, to host conference for Christian parents. Oh, that's great. Christian parents of LGBT identify kids. Scheduled speakers include evangelical pastor who resigned after board discovered son's attraction to minors. All right, how about that, huh? With the stated goal of helping parents demonstrate the unconditional love of Jesus. All right, who's the lineup? Obviously, Andy Stanley himself, embracing the Journey co-founders Greg and Lynn McDonald, former megachurch pastor John Ortberg, North Point Ministries' Debbie Kousey, and LGBT advocate Justin Lee. I pray to God that is not a Korean. <laughs> I would be forever ashamed. All right. Okay. Now, <laughs> if we look at the money crash and why the world's all falling apart, it's because this agenda is going. But this agenda, I believe, will carry on all the way to something. Whereas the money is going down, 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 and it's crashing, and it's going to lead to, well, before we lead to that, where's all the money going? Oh, a woke agenda, remember? They spend all their money on garbage like that. Oh, no, pastor, I think you're stretching things, stretching things. Well, well here's a title from uh, the article from Breitbart. And if you don't believe that news source, that's fine. You can instead then look up the exact company names that they bring up, the exact dollar amount that they bring up, and some of the links that they bring up. And you decide yourself if there's something fishy or not with what's going on with companies and businesses and banks nowadays. And you wonder why the whole world's falling apart and where our money is going. Here's the title of the article. Black Lives Matter and Related Causes Received Nearly $83 Billion from Corporations. This is from Claremont Institute. And they examine the statistics right here. Okay, I'm going to read some of it right here. As a point of reference, 82.9 82 billion is more than the GDP of 46 African countries. In, 20, in 2022, the Ford Motor Company's profits were 23 billion. They also noted the sum of 82.9 billion includes more than $123 million to the BLM parent organizations directly, as well as much more to other organizations supporting BLM's agenda. Here are several popular corporations. Walmart, for example, which is based in Arkansas, gave a whopping $100 million in support of BLM and related causes focusing on racial equity. Amazon gave even more supplying the movement with an astonishing $169.5 million. And you wonder why BLM leaders were able to get that much money to buy mansions living in white neighborhoods, not black neighborhoods. <laughs> Racist you. Meanwhile, the pharmaceutical company 
AbbVie gave the movement over $62 million in funding. Allstate gave $7.7 million to the cause, and American Express gave $50 million. Apple gave $100 million, while AT&T gave $21.5 million. The movement and its causes received another $90 million from Nike. United Airlines, JetBlue, Southwest Airlines, and Delta Airlines all gave money to BLM and related causes as well. Bank of America, meanwhile, provided $18.25 million to BLM and related causes, while Wells Fargo diverted $210 million towards BLM and related causes. Deloitte, if I'm mispronouncing that, gave $85 million to BLM and related causes. Asset management giant BlackRock, of course, BlackRock, put a shocking $810 million towards BLM and related causes, while other powerful financial institutions also bankrolled the movement, with Capital One Financial giving $10 million, Morgan Stanley giving $30 million, U.S. Bank giving $160 million, and Goldman Sachs giving $10.1 million. Meanwhile, Prudential Financial supplied the movement and its related causes with the sum of $450 million, but was outdone by MasterCard, which gave $500 million. The database, uh, the database found that Boeing gave $15.6 million, while Northrop Grumman gave $2 million, and Raytheon gave $25 million. The Walt Disney Company gave $8.8 .8 million to BLM and related causes, while the Pokemon Company gave $200 million. $200,000, excuse me. All right, they weren't that bad, okay? They weren't that bad, all right? They got to catch them all, so. <laughs> me. So notice right here, when you're hearing all of this, to say that they weren't giving lots of dough, to woke causes, you're lying through your teeth. You're lying through your teeth and you wonder where all of that is going. So because of this equity excuse, woke agenda excuse, look where it's leading down. It's leading down to somebody needs to save the economy. And if there's one thing voters are really going for now, I don't care if you're Republican, they want to save the economy. Money, money, money. Do you see where all of this is leading towards it? See right here, the presidential race, you get elderly people. It doesn't really seem like a good candidate unless one person comes in pretty strong, pretty smart. They'd vote for that guy because the Democrats have constantly failed. So they're sick and tired of that. This side, the world is trying to put hate on them, and they're even divisive amongst each other. So then it just takes one guy for both blue and red parties for someone to save us. War, we need someone to elect who is good in foreign policy. At the right timing, when war is right about to occur, imagine someone comes in and just swoops to save the day. The money crash, we're about to lose it all, Unless someone who runs for election says, I can save the economy. Did you notice all this timing right here with all these three? That's my point. It's running to something. Somebody needs to save us. We need a Messiah figure. We need a Messiah figure. Somebody to save us. Now, when I said that 2 Thessalonians 2, 1, I say all of this, it might be more literal than you think. Bible believers, we have read two things necessary, right? Of falling away first and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, right? When we talk about the falling away, we know what that is. That's the apostasy that's occurring, amen? Yeah. And the churches are falling apart, messing up. That's the reason why that the Antichrist is able to come out soon. But I wonder if falling away is more literal than you think. What do you mean by that, Pastor? Why limit a falling away just to the church? Why not apply falling away literally to everybody and everything? Maybe with the church, like Andy Stanley and those churches falling apart with the apostasy, combined with the economy, combined with 
war combined with the presidential race and everything that's going on? Perhaps it means the falling away of everything. And then if you get the falling away of everything, notice the next part of verse 3, that man of sin be revealed. Then the revealing can come out more quickly. I wonder why the timing is revealing after falling away. You ever wondered that? Why is it falling away first? The Bible even says, except there come a falling away what? First. Meaning that after that, who's revealed? The man of sin. Now, I believe, like I've taught you, that when it's referring to that day, this is referring to the entire apocalyptic timeline. We can go all the way from the beginning of the rapture to the second advent. And then the revealing would be sometime in the middle of that occurrence. But the bottom line is this. The bottom line is, if these are the two, uh, if this is the thing that must happen first, then the and if this revealing is sometime in the middle of the tribulation, brother, sister in Christ, this might be sooner than we thought then. This just means this is sooner then. If this is sometime in the middle of the tribulation. Do you realize that? This might be very, very soon where they really want that Messiah to save us, that revealing. But if there's one thing we know about this beast, okay, look at this line right here, and this is what caused a lot of uh, what happened with the Democrat Party and then the economy breaking apart. But it carries on. It carries on from Democrat side. Uh, it carries on from the economy side where it leads to the beast himself, the Antichrist. And he is woke and he is LGBTQ and everything. We know that, right? About the beast. He is completely of that agenda. Uh, the Bible shows in Daniel 11. You can turn over there and then we'll close it off for the night. Daniel chapter 11. We know one thing about the beast. He follows this agenda. He identifies himself with this pink wording, and then you see Catholicism, and you also see uh, Jewish roots, which we know that. But uh, we'll go to Daniel 11 to explain some few parts right here. Verse 37, neither shall he regard the God of his fathers, showing the true God, see that, of his generation. Why, what's that forefathers in Daniel's time? of the true God. That's, those are Jews. So if it says the God of his fathers, it shows he aligns himself with Israel. Nor what? The desire of women. See? He's this pink thing right here. He's this pink thing right there. He's not, uh, he's not of that normal tendencies, the normal lust that normal people would have. Nor regard any God, for he shall magnify himself above all. Okay. We know that the Catholic Church plays a huge part in that one. I wonder if there's something here. Title of New Ways Ministry. New Ways Ministry is building bridges between the LGBTQ community and the Catholic Church together. That's their website. You know what they posted on their article? Pope Francis names... LGBTQ positive members to Council of Cardinals. He, gets a, he appointed several new members who are LGBTQ positive records. Now, if you get like this, I think that's like the second highest rank next to the Pope. If you get those people involved, one of them could become a Pope one day. Do you see how, uh, what am I trying to point out? This is getting closer than we thought. It's like any moment now. With Israel, we pay attention to the scenes of what's going on. Could the Antichrist bring his persecution, the times, the troublesome times in Israel, Jacob's trouble, will it be sooner than we thought? Well, this was published by the Middle East Monist Monitor. Middle East Monitor. Title of the article is Christians Will Face jail in Israel, in Israel for proselytizing under proposed bill. In other words, if you were trying to give them the gospel, tell them how to get saved, you could face jail time. They 
thankfully, though, thankfully, they're, they're not that mean because the title of the article from the Christian Post is After All the Heat and Complaints. Title of the article, Israel won't criminalize sharing the gospel amid pushback to a new bill, Netanyahu says. Oh, 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 that's a relief. But why did they propose that? Why did they bring that up to the table before? Unless we're getting really close. As I would always end, even so come Lord Jesus. Father God, I pray that tonight's teaching was a blessing to the hearers, made us more aware of what's going around in our world and your coming, and that uh, we'll have our eyes open and get to work in your business, winning souls to Jesus Christ, not follow along with the plagues of this world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.